It's been said that happy employees make for happy customers and that equals a successful company. One entrepreneur made headlines in 2015 when he decided to test out that theory. Dan Price, CEO of Gravity Payments, a credit card processing company, shook up the business world when he announced that he would raise his company's minimum wage to $70,000. Yes, $70,000, their minimum wage annually. And get this, he slashed his own salary by $1 million to help make it happen. Price says revenue soared and headcount grew by 70%. In the media, he was celebrated but also heavily criticized. Fox News called him a tree-hugging socialist, but Harvard Business School hailed his company as a success, even during the pandemic when businesses took a turn for the worse. He says his motto is always invest in people. And look, if only we had more CEOs who say they care about the quality of life of their employees. So what could American corporations learn from this hip, 30-something entrepreneur with shoulder-length hair and Brad Pitt looks? Those are Inc.com's words, not mine. I'm just the messenger. So what does Dan Price think of capitalism in America, Joe Biden's presidency, and the fight for a $15 minimum wage? How's his company doing? Let's ask him. Dan Price, CEO of Gravity Payments, joins me now. Dan, thanks so much for coming on the show. Um, first thanks, off, thanks for having me, Maddie. let's talk about your remarkable story. Let's talk about your story, Dan. What made you take the leap back in 2015 to up your employees' salaries and cut your own by a million dollars? Well, it was just simply the right thing to do. And I, I think I don't deserve the amount of credit I'm getting for it. I think it just shows how low the bar is. But initially, one of my employees um, approached me and let me know that she had to take a second job at McDonald's to afford to pay her bills, even though she was doing just as good of a job for the company as I was doing and arguably adding more value at times. Um, and then a second employee, you know, kind of explained something similar a few years later. But then um, in 2015, I was on a hike with a friend and she was explaining to me how a $200 rent increase was making her life completely unlivable. And I'm like, wow, this is such a, a hardworking, you know, just like anybody, if anybody deserves a living wage, like this person does. And yet, you know, we're not paying that. So I just was angry enough and upset enough at how everything works that I, I took the plunge and uh, it's worked out great. So you say it's worked out great. Is there really a clear link that you can see, measure, prove between what you say is the increase in profits and revenues and the raising of wages of your employees? Because the standard view, Dan, you know this, is you raise wages as a business, you're raising your costs, you're cutting into your profits. Yeah, well, we've tripled in size in the last six years, so that's pretty good. We made it through a wow. pandemic where we lost 50% of our revenue, and our team on an individual voluntary basis decided to give anonymous, so there's no pressure pay cuts to help us get through it. And then, of course, you know, we paid them back and reinstituted raises once we we're able to get through the toughest part of the pandemic. But what's even more exciting about how it's worked, in my opinion, is that our team went from between zero and two babies born per year to we've had 60 babies born in the last six years. We also had a 10x in people buying homes for the wow. first time because rent is so out of control, just run away out of control. Student debt, you know, please, Joe Biden, forgive this student debt. But our employees, 70 percent of them were able to pay down or completely pay off their debts. And they between doubled and tripled uh, their savings for retirement. But what's also true is zero big companies followed suit. The issue of income inequality in the United States went from very, very bad, unlivable to even worse. And so I think we kind of proved two things. I think we proved that it can work in more ways than one. And I think that we proved that corporate America doesn't care. They're not going to follow suit. And the only way that we're going to get these sorts of changes is through collective organizing, through voting, through changing laws. Uh, that I didn't think that was the case. I thought at that yeah. time, because so, I grew up in a conservative family, conservative Christian family in Idaho, I thought I could lead the way and the others would follow suit. And I was disappointed. We see the results we've got. Well, you've certainly uh, raised the number of babies in the world, according to what you were just saying, thanks to your million dollar pay cut. That's uh, significant. Um, let me ask you this on the subject of legislation. President Biden has announced that beginning March of 2022, he will require federal contractors to pay their employees $15 an hour. 
But still, he can do that, right, through executive action. But still no federal minimum wage out of the Senate of $15. Given your own experiences, do you think $15 an hour is even enough? No, Betty, if you looked at the productivity and the way that it's grown over the past 30 or 40 years, and you just benchmark the minimum wage, just keep the worker where they were, don't even improve it, we'd have a minimum wage more like $25 to $35 an hour. In fact, yes. if you looked at median incomes in the United States during that same time, instead of 55000 a year, we'd have 100000 a year. So Joe Biden should come out tomorrow and say, I was wrong, I'm sorry, and he should set that minimum at $25 to $35, and we can use that pressure to set the market a little bit better. And with small businesses that can't afford it, you know, we're either going to be paying people a living wage or we're going to make them dependent on subsidies for, for the government where we're essentially subsidizing Walmart and Amazon and all these companies that have no loyalty to this yes. country, no loyalty to the American worker. So we need to use every mechanism in our power to put pressure on these companies. And this is a powerful way that Joe Biden can do it by executive order with no Republican support. Yeah, and look, I mean, the problem Joe Biden has is that he can't even get members of his own party like Joe Manchin to get to 15. Joe Manchin thinks $11 is fine for the people of West Virginia, where he represents, which is totally bonkers. Um, but what Biden can do is do something about income inequality. You mentioned inequality. The administration is planning on raising the top rates of capital gains and income tax in this country, and some rich folks are losing their minds. What's your reaction to an increase in taxes on the rich? Will that even hurt you anymore? Because you, you're, you're not rich anymore, right? <laughs> Well, um, you know, I, I think it depends on the details, but I would be happy to pay more in taxes. And in fact, if you look at the countries that are the most successful in allowing people to, you know, make a living wage, to go from being the little guy to being wealthy, climbing that economic hierarchy, actually the United States is a great example because in the 50s and 60s, we had a 50% uh, average tax rate plus for wealthy people and twice in yes. a row we doubled median incomes within 20 years and if you look at you know the the countries that are doing it right right now the countries where people really have a chance to thrive there's about 30 countries according to not my favorite organization the world economic forum that are ahead of us on that scale and all <laughs> of them have a tax rate of 50 percent around there or more for wealthy people and so it's not rocket science. We've done point. it before. We can do it again. We have examples all over the world so, proving this will work. But the corporate lobby is so powerful, we're going to have to really unite, overcome some of our other differences to unite around this and make it happen. Dan, 30 seconds left. How do you define your politics, your view of the world? Do you consider yourself to be a socialist? I know Fox News does. <laughs> well... I, I'm I'm bad with labels, and Trevor Noah told me one time that makes me a socialist because I'm not good with labels. I don't agree with him, but I grew up in conservative Christian Idaho, listening to Rush Limbaugh from 10 to 1 every day in a business-first family. And now I'm like, hey, let's all work together to make a good life where you can raise a family on one income. You know, we automate out some of the worst jobs, and we raise the income for everybody else yeah. so it doesn't hurt any of our workers. What and a, we can have a very prosperous future. What a great message. A great message to end on. We're out of time, but that's a great message. Dan Price, Gravity Payments, thank you so much for your time. Fascinating. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.